Hey guys, want to do a little experiment on uh, grafting avocados. Basically, I have a wood scion from an avocado tree I clipped about eight months ago. All right, so January, I got some wood from uh, some bud wood off of a Haas avocado and I uh, put it in a plastic bag and I saved it in uh, the refrigerator. So what I want to do is take that piece of wood that I've had in the refrigerator for so long. Let's see here. Right here, all right. Let's flip this around. So here's the bag. In this bag, I have several different uh, clips from, obviously short, fat, from the Avocado Grove, Haas Avocado, I have a Pinkerton, a Lamb Haas, and a short, stick with uh, paint on it is a fuerte. So these ones, I all took them for an experiment basically that I've had in the refrigerator for over eight months now. As you can see, some of them are starting to rot out, but they're still green, okay, for the most part. So today I wanna graft this guy right here, which is gonna be the short and fat one from the Avocado Grove, Haas Avocado. Let's take a look. So we're gonna go in and grab this, all right? This has been in this bag, wrapped up for eight months. It does not look super healthy, okay? Doesn't look good at all, actually. But, as you can see, it's a little burnt right there. We're gonna try to graft it anyways, all right? So let's take a look and see if our experiment will work. Let's go and take a peek outside. So basically what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go over to my little incy beansy greenhouse here and grab a seedling. Okay, so all of these were avocados that I ate and I started the seed in the garage with, you know, the three Q-tips, not the Q-tips, the three uh, toothpicks. And then once they started to root, I picked them up, put them in these little pots right here, and oh, I look at that. There you go, see the roots are doing what they're supposed to and going wild. So anyways, I'm gonna pick one of these bad boys and we're gonna graft it. So I'm gonna try, you know what? I'm just gonna go with this one that we just ripped the roots out. So it's already gonna be a little shocked. So basically that uh, seed that we started inside the house, in the garage, once it started to root, I put it in these little, uh, about eight inch tall by four inch wide plastic uh, malleable pots. You can find them online. They're very inexpensive. And I just put some, um, garden soil in there put uh, the seed even though there was no uh, trunk coming out no tree coming out I still put the seed in the dirt directly and um, sure enough it grew and took off no problem I put it all on a drip line like this so it's very easy to uh, water and manage because um, you always want to keep them wet, right? You don't want to have them dry out, especially here in Southern California. We get 100, 110 degree weather, no problem. So having it on a drip line keeps everything alive and going. So we're going to use this bad boy. Before I um, do the grafting, I'm going to transplant this into a bigger pot because the roots are already going crazy here. So let's go uh, transplant this into a bigger pot and then we'll do our grafting. All right, guys, well, here we go. So now I got a bigger pot and I still have my avocado seedling starting my root stock, okay? Now, you necessarily don't have to transplant this right now. You could technically just cut it, put your graft, and then put it back under the irrigation system and keep an eye on it and wait for the magic to happen, wait for everything to start growing. And then once it starts growing, you could go in and transplant it. However, since I had this under my uh, shade cloth, which is you know my greenhouse, um, protecting it from the sun, it's a 30% shade cloth, so it helps it out. Since I had to rip these roots 
off out of the dirt because the roots grew from here into the soil of my raised garden bed. Now that it's already in shock, I might as well just grab it, take it out of here, place it into a bigger home, and then do all the stressing, all the clipping, all the disturbance all at once. So that if and when the grafts take, it's already in its new home and I don't have to transplant this for another year, two years, or however long it takes. So um, first things first, uh, let's transplant this into the bigger spot. Shake this up a little bit, get those roots moved up a little bit. Oh, inside here, all I have is uh, some garden soil. This is my own mixture of uh, raised garden bed soil and I put uh, sand in it, construction washed construction sand. I have other videos uh, showing that stuff. So this, nothing fancy, pull this upside down. Have everything come out. And as you could see, we have a nice ball of roots. I'm not sure if you could see that or not. Lots and lots and lots of roots. Good, strong, fat, healthy ones. Here's that original seed that I started in a cup of water with the three toothpicks. Loosen this up a little bit. As you can see, it's very sandy. See how it just falls apart? Super sandy because that's, uh, you know, avocado seeds, whether it's a seedling or a big mature tree, they like loose, very well drained soil. Okay. So now that that's in its current or its future home, we're just going to get this and fill it up with our dirt. It's okay that we're making a mess because we're outside, right? We're doing this in the house. It's a different story. Make sure this guy is nice and straight in the center of your pot. And you want to fill up the soil all the way, give it a nice little shake, all the way to the seed like that. Okay, as you keep going, it's going to self level and pack. Give that straight, give it a nice little shake, and we are good. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's ready to go. Now here you could water it, let it sink in, but I'm gonna do that later. I'm not gonna do it right now. So let's just say this is all in there, set, ready to go. First things first is grab your shears. These, I already cleaned them. However, just so you know, I like to clean my shears or my grafting knives prior to each use with uh, hydrogen peroxide, nothing fancy. So I'm covering up the label because I'm not affiliated with anybody, uh, but hydrogen peroxide or rubbing alcohol, just make sure everything that you use is clean and sterile so you don't bring on diseases to your suffering trees. And what I mean by suffering is because we're gonna cut the sucker right in half. So that's gonna go through some suffering, um, but it's gonna pick up. So anyways, these are already clean. My uh, grafting knife is already clean. And I go about uh, six inches up, so right around here. And nothing fancy, chop this in the compost pile. Now that this is there, we get our scion, okay? and we have to prep it. Now again, this is a budwood from about eight months ago and I had it in the refrigerator. So the way I prep it, you get the, um, you know, grafting tape. All right, your little grafting tape here. And I like to start from the bottom. Let's say about right here, right? And hold it tight and I like to wrap it. Pull and wrap, pull and wrap. Sometimes it rips, pull and wrap, pull and wrap, pull and wrap, keep it going all the way don't damage these buds all these little buds on here that were there so i picked this back in like january from a fruiting tree it was like the, the season that things are starting to uh explode as far as all the nodes all the flowers and fruits all the on the trees so now that i give this a good wrap all right, I went all the way up and all the way back down. Rip that little extra off. So now this is all there. So the moisture is going to be retained in here and it's protected from the sun. You don't want to have water get in there, pests, other things. So this paper, it's uh, it's waxy paper. It eventually breaks off. And if this does take off, 
the tree, the stalk, the sign is gonna be strong enough to just rip right through that and the new leaves come right out. So this is a good experiment. Usually, usually I grab my little seedling and I go and cut a fresh scion when it's ready. Mm. January, February, March. Whenever those budwoods are ready to be harvested and picked, I pick them and then within a day, two, three days, a week maximum, that's when I um, do my incision, right? So this is a test to see if it actually works. So now that we have this and this ready to go, we need to cut this guy right down the middle, okay? And this could actually be cut even a little shorter. All right, so now I'm actually about four inches tall. And the reason why I went shorter is because it was a little lanky, a little, it was too thin. This budwood is really thick. It's actually almost double that size. I'm not sure if you could see uh, P4. P4 is about double that size compared to this guy. So we wanna have them pretty much the same size. And if you can't have the same size, no problem. In reality, all you need is one side. This is a different scion I have. Always harvested about eight months ago. All you need is one side of the cambrium layer to connect, okay? So just one side connecting. So we're gonna go right here and put this right down the middle and gently go right down the middle, okay? And we're gonna go not too deep. So look at that. That's about an inch, three quarters of an inch to an inch deep. Take that bad boy out, grab our scion, and we're gonna cut off that first quarter inch out of the way. And we're gonna grab our, our blade and start chopping, okay? Right there and right there. And keep chopping because, see this broke right now, but no big deal. We still have all our paper, we have plenty of scion to work with. All right, so now that this is right here, we're just going to clean up. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but it's still green in there. Eight months later, this was in the refrigerator in a Ziploc bag. Nothing fancy, no chemicals, no uh, hormones, nothing, just nice and clean. So now that we have a pretty good V, all right? Pretty good V on both sides. I want to get it and place it inside. I'm gonna move this paper up a little bit. Now don't forget, once you cut that area with your blade, don't touch it. You don't wanna to touch it because oil is on your fingers. Uh, you don't wanna get it dirty. You get more chances of, you know, bad growths. So now that this is in, we're going to find a nice sweet spot for it. Right through there. Okay, these actually match up pretty darn well. Okay, push it all the way in like that. Now what we do, we grab another little piece of our wax paper and we are going to wrap it, okay? Pull and wrap. And that rips because I pulled too hard, but it doesn't matter. Start again, pull and wrap, pull and wrap, pull and wrap. Sometimes it moves, you wanna make sure it doesn't move too much, right? Because you wanna make sure that those two cambrium layers from the scion and your rootstock stay lined up. You don't need both sides lined up, you just need one side lined up. As long as you have one side lined up, it's gonna work. So this is on nicely wrapped, okay? You can do it right here and squeeze it, push it in a little bit, make sure that it's there. Now here's, this is ready to go. One more further step that I like to do is, This guy, rubber band, nothing fancy, right? Rubber, rubber band, chop it. I'm not gonna cut, but grab your blade, cut it, and what I wanna do is I wanna get this and squeeze it right on that V, right? So we want like this. I wanna squeeze this nice and tight so that it stays on there and gives it a very, very, very good squeeze, all right? And I just go ahead and I wrap and wrap and wrap and wrap, okay? that and I make sure that the graft is on there tight okay and then once you do that get a little 
Tai. Okay. One knot. One knot is all you need, but whatever. Go with two. Go with three. As long as it's on there. And realistically, it just has to be on there for like one week. But this, believe it or not, will stay on there for two, three months, no problem. So now that this is on, we are realistically done. I'm gonna give it a nice, good watering, and I'm gonna put it right back in the uh, spot where I originally took out this guy from. So I'm gonna go place this over there. I'm gonna put that watering um, uh, irrigation line on there so I don't have to worry about it. And we'll come back to this and see what's going on. Before I actually end it, I'm gonna put a little tag, a little, uh, you know, little note right here staying. Today on August 24th, I trimmed this and I grafted on a rootstock. I did this, blah, 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 showing me exactly what's going on. So two, three, four, five months, a year down the road, I know exactly what graft this is. And again, this is a rootstock from an avocado seed, that an avocado that I ate um, back in December, January, uh, 2023. And this is the scion that I harvested from the uh, avocado grove um, back in January 2023. Now we're in August 23, um, August 24th, 2023. So ready to go, let's give it a shot. And then uh, if I remember to, I'll make an, an upcoming uh, video two, three months down the road, maybe four months, whenever it is, whenever we find new shoots off of here to see if this is a successful graft or not. Usually within four weeks, you'll know if it's taking or not. Um, However, some of them can take up to three months to give some signs. So be patient, just like when you started the seeds with three little toothpicks and a cup of water, it takes three, four months to have some roots come out. Same thing here. All the magic is happening. You just have to be patient. Let it sit there and wait. Now, if this completely dies out and turns into a dead stick, obviously it's dead. But as long as it's a little green, it's alive. Don't touch it, don't rush. Let us do his thing, and then we'll follow up later. All right? Happy gardening, guys.